Greetings, welcome, welcome. So it's been a while since I've posted anything. And it hasn't been for lack of activity on my part. And I'll say that there's been a lot of interesting developments. It was, um, I'd switched gears from the spinning stuff to solid state stuff. And it was um, sort of like those solar flares were like a big cattle prod to my ass. Um, cause they suddenly like, all right, well, you know, you better get busy. And so I did, and I made a lot of progress and I've, I've seen something that, that, um, I had never seen before. You know, I was going to go back, you know, with spinning the, the, um, rotors. I mean, I oftentimes see that there's more voltage co coming into your batteries that you're charging then the battery that you're using goes down. The only problem is half the time, more than half the time, it seems like there's less capacity in the battery that you charge. And somehow it just gets this voltage that's like a surface charge or something. And I was planning to work on that for a while. Um, but in the back of my mind, <clears throat> ever since I first like heard Bedini and Bearden and all that, I said, if, I mean, if there's something to this, then you actually should be able to see it capacitor to capacitor. And so that's um, that's what I accomplished uh, approximately two days after the solar flares was showing capacitor to capacitor. Um, you know, I, I don't want to use all like the shadowy, you know, COP grid, uh, more watts out than, than watts in. And um, so I'll go ahead and then, I, you know, I was thinking like, do I want to share this with people or is it going to be a problem? You know, I don't want to start cursing. To heck with that. Um, you know, the, the magnetic field's weakening. The poles are shifting at an accelerating rate. If you believe Ben Davidson, there's a galactic current sheet incoming. And it might not be true, but, it, you know, it's probably true that within 25 years, I mean, everything on the planet's going to be changed. And... Um, you know, if you give something a hundred year time frame, it's like, you know, why the hell would you ever not want to talk about something that you want to talk about? Um, so, I mean, I'll have fun talking about this, this uh, transformer that's a little bit different than other transformers, behaves a little bit differently. And I think what, if I'm to be useful to uh, my community, and again, you know, the other thing here is, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of times people, you know, I was, for instance, I was reading um, on the, the Wright brothers. Uh, it's amazing how much stuff like came from the bicycle and then from the bicycle to the plane. But, you know, they figured out how to do all the control for flying. And that was like 1906. And then, um, you know, I remember reading at the end, it was just the Wikipedia thing. In 1944, he's like talking to an army officer and he's saying, you know, we really, this isn't really the direction we wanted things to go. <laughs> now, it's good that, you know, he wasn't talking to him in 1945. Um, but he was saying, you know, we wanted to make people free. And th this is not, you know, freedom, what you're doing with this. So again, it's like whenever you have anything that's new or different, um, it, it of course can be abused. But um, I, what I'm showing, like, are you better off is it would with what I'm showing? Uh, would you be better off getting a, a solar panel from Harbor Freight? Yeah, you bet. <laughs> you know, it'd be a heck of a lot less expensive. You wouldn't spend all this time putting it together, and it would be putting out more power. Um, but it's sort of the concept if people want to get it and if they want to run with it. And um, uh, I have to be careful because I'm. I mean, I'm. Uh, I can be guilty as well. But um, I mean, something I phrase I came up with is, uh, you know, ignorance is self-annealing. <laughs> you, know, you can just like beat someone over the head with it and they're just going to be like, no, no. Uh, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, it, it's not like this is going to change the world or something <laughs> because, um, you know, uh, it's like if, if you raise someone from the dead with your voice, then, you know, well, we got to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, um, I, but you know, sort of that's that's kind of the nature of some people. You know, it's it's not like, well, gee, you got to teach me that someday. 
It's like, hey, this guy's a threat. <laughs> Let me shut up, and uh, what I'll tell you is that there, there'll be four videos here. The first one will be a background or just on what's going on. And then the second one, I'll show you how to build a circuit. The third one, I'll show you how it goes with one pulse, one pulse at a time. The fourth one, I'll, I'll show you that uh, in my gosh, it's uh, it's over unity at 30 volts, and uh, that surprised me. It's a very forgiving approach. There's a lot of things wrong with the approach that I have. Um, not wrong with the approach. It, it, it just uh, mechanistically, it's not optimal. Uh, like for instance, I, I snapped the um, the transformer and I had to super glue it back together. So it's not a good flux path there. You know, I mean, it's not bad but you can notice the difference and, and things like that like there's a lot of things I do differently um, but enough why don't I just um, get this out to you and uh, um, and then you know work on it so that maybe by the time the next solar flares are here it is something uh, as or more useful than like a cheap solar panel from Harbor Freight okay so here's the first part. Take care. Bye. Greetings. Welcome. Welcome. So in this video, I'm starting on a, a new project, or rather revisiting something that I'd looked at briefly some years prior. And that is the Thane Hines bitoroidal transformer, a.k.a. the Tom Bearden motionless electric generator. So she just put, I didn't even put by toroidal, Thane Hines toroidal transformer in Wikipedia. One of the more interesting links is this one. So if we bring that up. Design and modeling of by toroid transformer by Kishnu Prom Akaram. And this was part of his electronics engineering degree at this university, which I found was a Malaysian University, and this is from January 2015. So we'll just see if maybe we can use this as a bit of a background, or I'm not sure if I'll just talk at you in this video or if I'll start building something. Um, so it's for obtaining efficiency beyond 100%. They, they say all kinds of crazy things once you get out of the, the Western educational institutions. Um, let's take a look here. And this is stuff that um, Thane has put out. And again, um, I learned about this through Thane Hines, but then when I went and looked at um, Tom Bearden's motional, motionless electric generator, I said, my gosh, that's essentially the same thing. And it's quite possible they both came up with it independently, um, but they both have patents. And, and Tom Bearden's Tom Bearden's work was earlier. So here is a conventional transformer. You have a coil. You have a core that allows flux to transfer to a second coil, and then you load the second coil, and you can transform voltage up or downwards depending on the turns ratio between the two coils. So the crux of the matter is with the transformer, as he, um, this gentleman points out here, that if you're taking a load off of your second coil, your output coil, the coil generates a magnetic pulse and unfortunately runs in the opposite direction of your input, opposing the operation of coil one and causing it to have to boost its input power in order to come overcome this backward magnetic flow. All goes back to Heinrich Lenz, doesn't it? Always seems to go back to Lenz. Um, so you could look at it as a back EMF or as changing the impedance of, of uh, coil one. Either way you look at it, the more power you take off of your output coil, the more you have to put into your input coil. And if you have extremely efficient transformers, you might get above 95, 98. I don't. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but I think they have um, transformers that are in excess of 98 percent efficient. But that's all you're ever going to do. 
Yeah, he states it for us. So this is what makes electrical efficiency of a conventional transformer always less than 100%. Now here's the bitoroidal transformer. So you have your primary coil going to your secondary coil, and then you have another secondary coil. And you see the primary coil is linked with the magnetic flux path to the secondary coil. And the secondary coil is linked with a magnetic flux path to a second secondary coil. And one other thing to note that it wasn't just happenstance that these this is thicker than this line. So your flux path between the two secondaries is thicker than the flux path from the primary to either secondary. And yeah, Thane does have a patent on it. It, it, it was an accepted patent. Um, so what's the point of this setup? So you have your primary coil with uh, either an AC input, which that's what Thane has been running his machines with, or pulse DC, which is what Tom Bearden was doing with the motionless electric generator. And the magnetic flux goes out to the secondary coil. Now you take a, a resistor and put in a load. The back EMF generated by the secondary coil now has two paths that it can flow on. It can flow back to the primary or it can flow to the other secondary. The path to the other secondary has a lower magnetic reluctance than the path to the primary. So if these were electrical um, circuits, you would say that this is the high resistance path, this is the low resistance path. But we'll say that more correctly, this is the low reluctance path and this is the high reluctance path. So the majority of your back EMF goes here. And so now when you draw off a load, there's not, you don't need to increase your input power to the primary. And a secondary finding is that just as when that back EMF goes back here, which is what causes you, you know, when we're looking at it in a conventional setup, when the back EF, EMF goes from your output back to input, causing you to need to increase your input whenever you load it. Now you don't have to do that and it goes over to here and so if you draw a load off of here you actually get more off of the secondary than if this one wasn't loaded. And then if you load this one the output from this other secondary increases as well. Now it's not um, a hundred percent isolated because there's still probably some that can flow back there, but it's um, it's pretty much isolated. So that's pretty much all there is to it. And then a, this right up the is patented to have an efficiency higher than 100%. And if you can do that, you can address the energy scarcity problem. So next the there's just a bit of a review on conventional transformers and their design. So you go back to Faraday. Oh, he's back to Faraday. Faraday and Lens. Um, and that losses can be um, resistive losses of power in the primary and secondary windings, eddy current losses, iron hysteresis losses, and leakage fluxes. So that's just a nice little review there. So what this gentleman did when he made it was instead of making one um, path thicker, he used two different materials. So the primary core consists of a normal transformer iron, a permeability, relative permeability to air of around 200. Secondary core consists of permalloy with a relative permeability around 100,000. Um, and so the permalloy has um, lower reluctance and higher permeability. Uh, let's just skip all this and get to the good part. <laughs> so here he set this up as a 
traditional transformer, input power 3.66 watts, load power 2.71 watts, efficiency 74%. Now we see on page 23 of his write-up, it's set up as a bitoroid, input power 1.55 watts, load power 2.74 watts, efficiency 177%. So that's really just the main point, and then they go through a lot. This is interesting, that the phase between the voltage and the amperage, which are 90 degrees apart, don't really change under load, and um, that's, that's very interesting. So you see convention, with the conventional transformer, that they're no longer 90 degrees apart, but um, with bitoroid, they remain 90 degrees apart. So that that's pretty much it. So this is just a, you know, don't don't blame me. <laughs> this is this is uh, Kishnu's write up at the university, and that's what they're reporting.